Hey guys, just over here with a long overdue review of, I guess, my latest watch that's really going to stay in my collection or be a real part of my watch collection rather than a workout tool or a gift for somebody else. Um, this is, as many of you may already know, the Glycine Airman Number no. 1 reissue. Um, we'll go more into the specific model that I have in just a second. Um, I didn't do an unboxing of this uh, watch on YouTube because I deleted the video by accident. Um, so I put it back in the box. I'm going to show you kind of what it comes with and give you a sense um, of the packaging and of what you'll receive. Um, because I'm not wearing this watch right now, obviously, today's wristwatch check, sorry about the lighting, will be a Seiko 5. This is the SNKL 41. Um, beautiful watch. This is my first mechanical watch given to me by my brother. Um, and something that I think everyone should have in their collection at some point, uh, the Seiko 5. Very wide range of styles, um, you know, a fairly wide price point between like 50 and $200, and just reliable, well-made classic watches to get people into watch collecting and into the hobby. Um, I don't wear this much anymore, but I was the moment. Anyway, um, to the glycine. I'm going to try to keep this quick. Um, First, let's unbox it a little bit and just show you what comes with it and how it's set up. Um, this strap does not come with this watch. I have that to talk in just a little bit. Um, if you get it from an authorized dealer, you should get a glycine microfiber cloth. It's a simple black cloth, you know, like a lens cloth for glasses or any watch cleaning cloth. Um, excuse the yellow film all over mine. We've been having very severe pollen conditions um, and because it's very comfortable temperature out I've had the windows open uh, I need to clean up a little bit anyway it comes with a cloth and then it comes in um, at least now it comes in this standard glycine box I've seen people unbox watches in this line that come in a like a wooden special edition box which I was kind of hoping for but this is fine too um, all glycines come with the international guarantee you can see the reference number here, um, the 3944-66, and then the movement number, the glycine 293. Um, I've seen conflicting reports um, that I, I couldn't quite make sense of on the internet as to whether this is just the 2893 movement or whether it's a movement based on the 2893, um, the language of which would make me think it would be a Salida movement. I'm not sure. Essentially, it's a 2893 um, that has been modified just a little bit, um, but you know it's a it's a standard Swiss movement, fairly entry level but very reliable. Inside the little envelope, you get the glycine, um, you know, instructions. I guess how to use the movement, how to set the watch. This should be fairly obvious for almost anyone who's used to collecting watches. It might be useful for people who are unsure. Um, you know. It also even tells you if you are a pilot, if you're buying this watch for your actual job, that the recommendation is to set the actual main watch to the GMT time and then use the, the bezel for local time. And um, then you get a warranty card, um, reference number, limited edition number, case number, which I'm covering, it's the serial number of the watch, and then date and stamp. And this package is pretty much the same as most watches in this price range. Um, very similar packaging to Hamilton. Open the box. Um, this is the strap that this watch came on. It's a nice, um, thin, very soft, very pliable leather strap. Clearly um, vintage inspired for the reissue. Um, it didn't really fit my wrist very well um, for reasons I'll get into later. Plus, I just wanted a different look. Um, so right now, because it's warm, I have the watch on the NATO strap that you see here. Um, comes with the plastic hang tag, Oops. with the reference number again, um, and then the LB77U refers to um, this strap. Um, if you, you know, you'll see in glycine references that the extra five digits is always the strap or bracelet reference. Uh, 100 meters water resistant, and then the movement again. And here's the watch. Um, so quick history, I'm not going to go in depth, I'll include some links if you'd like to do some more reading. There's been articles about this watch on Hadenki, there's some great historical reference materials for the Glycine Airman, 
Um, but this is a reissue of the original Glycine Airman, which was released in 1953 um, in order to better meet the needs of pilots in both the military and civilian sectors. Um, the story goes that one of the, the two um, heads of Glycine at the time, whose name I don't remember off the top of my head, uh, was on a flight and he asked the pilot what he would like to see in a watch, what would make it a, the best tool for his job. And he mentioned being able to track more than one time zone, which makes sense for a pilot, um, having a date, and then also um, being able to set the watch precisely. Um, you keep in mind this is 1953. Most mechanical watches at the time did not feature hacking movements, so you could not set a watch down to the precise second. Obviously some you could, but it was not that common um, the way it is today. And so the, the pilot said to the, the Glycine, um, I don't know what his uh, you know, founder, owner, boss, whatever he was, he said that he'd like to see it hack. And so the original version of this had a sort of special movement where the um, spring would pop out and cause it to hack, uh, which is a little different than the way it works now, um, but it featured hacking. Um, this is a pretty special watch because it, that uh, release, that invention in 1953, actually predates the Rolex GMT, which is probably the most famous um, multiple time zone pilot's watch uh, currently on the market. Um, but this actually came a little bit before it. Uh, it's a watch um, that along with its various versions over the years became very popular with military pilots. There's a lot of vintage um, versions of this watch uh, available, you know, used on eBay and in watch stores from Vietnam. Um, they're really cool. I kind of wish I could have afforded a vintage one. Um, but this was released a few years ago as a pretty much exact spot-on rep replica, if you will, or reissue of the original version. Um, there's a black dial version and a white dial version. Um, and then this this is the purest model, which means that it has the 24-hour dial that you see here. Um, the hour hand only rotates once per day. Um, there are 12 hour models as well, um, which are not referred to as purists because they're not the original version, since this was designed for the military. Um, and then there's also versions of the same watch with GMT hands, um, which did come out uh, later, but the original version was like this. It was just a, you know, a time only movement and then the second time zone was tracked with the bezel only. Uh, anyway, let's see, uh, what can I show you here? Um, the white dial version that I have features a brushed case. Um, the black dial version, which is the more um, famous, more traditional Glycine Airman, is actually a polished case. Um, and then the white dial, which you can't really see that well in the light today, for which I apologize. It's not like a stark white. It's kind of like silvery cream, if that makes sense. It's a vintage white that has a little bit of metallic gleam to it in certain lights. Um, you know, it is a three-handed watch, um, and you can see that for those of you who are not as comfortable reading military time, um, the design feature is kind of a tail, sorry, tail on the hour hand, um, which points to the equivalent 12-hour time, which is kind of useful. Let's talk measurements. Um, it's a small watch. This is an exact, um, you know, replication of the original size. My caliper is here. It's about 36 millimeters. It's not a perfect measurement. Uh, let me move the strap a little bit so I can get the thickness correct. Bear with me. It's about 11 millimeters thick, including the domed crystal. Lug to lug which is a pretty useful measurement for how to actually fit. You're looking at about 45-ish, 45 and a half millimeters. And then the lug width is uh, 20 millimeters. I'm not gonna measure that because um, I don't have tape on that part of the calibers, but it's 20 millimeters. Um, so it's a small watch. It's a, it's a true vintage size. For me, 36 millimeters is perfect. Um, if that sounds incredibly small to you, there are pretty close versions of the original Airman. Um, that are in, I believe, 42 millimeters. Um, you know, I, I personally think that it looks better in the smaller size. It looks truer to the, the historical reference that this is 
uh, inspired by. And it just, for a smaller wristed guy, fits a lot better. It looks true to my scale. Uh, it is 100 meters water resistant. The crown is just a simple push-pull um, with two stages, one for setting the date there, and then one for hacking and setting the time there. Um, you can hand wind it. It's a little difficult just because it's such a small crown, and this other crown is in the way, but it winds extremely smoothly. Um, my other glycine has a 2824 in it. Um, this movement winds much, much um, more smoothly. There's not as much of a grinding or sort of sandy sound to it. Um, this other crown, I don't know how well you can see it, um, it essentially holds in a little rectangular piece of metal and when you unscrew the crown just a little bit of the way, like this, you can turn the um, second time zone bezel. And so you know you can set it to whatever the time is. Let's say, here, I'll go back. Let's say I want to track the time in a time zone that's two hours behind. I would go there. I would screw it back in. And that way I can read my time on the inner dial and then the other time zone on the outer dial. Um, or you could, as the instructions suggest, if you're a pilot, have the watch always set to GMT time and then use the outer bezel for local time, since you'd be changing that more often. Um, one thing I will say, and I didn't realize this when I first got the watch, um, if you unscrew this crown, the secondary crown, all the way, um, both the crown and the little metal piece will just fall off. It's not actually like um, held on by anything other than the friction of turning in the crown. Um, so be careful if you get this watch not to just like freely unscrew it and then lose the two pieces, because then you've ruined your watch. Um, you'll see uh, the crystal is uh, sort of mildly domed. It is a plastic crystal um, because, again, it is based almost exactly on the original reference of this watch. Um, within a week and a half of owning this watch, I did manage to scrape the crystal pretty badly, um, but it buffed out very easily with PolyWatch. I have the watch on a Wrist Candy Watch Club green NATO just because it's warm out now and I don't want to sweat through all my leather bands. Um, as I mentioned before, the sort of vintage inspired leather strap that comes with it uh, for me was not a good fit and I'll explain why. If you can see where the lugs are in this watch, they're really, or sorry, where the lug holes are, like the holes are drilled, they're really far into the lugs and because the strap that comes with it is so thin, um, what happened for me because I have such a small wrist is that wearing it um, the, the strap bent down in such a way that there was still like a big amount of lug showing that was hanging over where the strap curved around my wrist. Uh, I don't know if that explains it very well, um, but all I'm saying is essentially um, you could see all this extra part of the lug from here to here like hanging over my wrist because I, I'm so skinny. Um, so if you have smaller wrists, I would suggest that you definitely keep in mind this strap probably won't look that good on you, although it is very comfortable. If you're a larger wristed guy, it won't be a problem at all. Um, it shouldn't matter because your wrist will go farther and sort of curve more gently with the strap. Um, my wrist for reference is a little under six and a half inches, probably like 6.4 inches. Um, I do have this much, much thicker strap from my Glycine Combat 6, um, which if you've watched that video, you may recall I had the opposite problem with. It's just way too thick for that really small, thin watch. Um, and the strap was just, it, it's just too big, it wasn't to scale with the watch. Um, however, because the lug stance of this watch is so much more aggressive, um, and it's a little bit thicker, this strap actually fits me really well on this watch. And if it were cooler out, like in the fall, or winter, or, or early spring, um, I would probably be wearing this watch on this leather strap, which I think looks great. Um, but just because it's warm out now, I have it on a NATO. Uh, I want to get this on my wrist and show it to you guys so you get a sense of how it wears. Uh, keep in mind what I just said about my wrists. They're very small, uh, just under six and a half inches. Uh, for sort of just overall frame reference, I'm just under six feet tall. I'm 5'11", and I weigh about 135 pounds, so I'm, I'm pretty little, uh, which is why I love the size of this watch. And there you can see how the watch wears on my wrist. Um, it's interesting, I've read in reviews, and Hodinkee said this when they reviewed the release of this watch, 
Um, because the face is so small, it's a 36 millimeter watch, the face is considerably smaller than that, the dial itself. Um, people are saying it wears smaller than 36, so it's a really truly vintage look. Um, I get what people are saying, um, and I think if you have a big wrist, that's probably true. Um, but on the, the flip side of that, the lugs are so widely spaced and also long um, lug to lug length for such a small watch that on my little wrist, as you can see, I think this wears bigger than a 36 millimeter watch. Um, just because, you know, from here to here is almost as long as my 41 millimeter uh, Mako USA. Um, so it does sort of span the wrist, and although it's a small piece, um, it has quite a bit of presence, I think, um, but with still you know, maintaining kind of a refined, um, elegant size and vintage style that fits me. And you can see there, it does play pretty well with the light. My light is not great at this angle. I apologize for that. Um, so anyway, this watch, um, I always forget which reference is which, but all of the uh, retail values for the Airmen number one series, whether they're GMTs, um, whether they're 12 or 24 hour dials and bezels, they all are supposed to retail for over $2,000. Um, this one I think is like 2100 or something like that. Uh, reputable ADs that people are very comfortable with and have been around a long time, Saltzman's, Iguana Cell, people like that, seem now to be selling them for about $1,600. That's US dollars, by the way. And then if you buy them gray market, um, I've seen them pop up for anywhere between about 800 and 1,000, um, generally closer to 1,000, but if you're really patient, you can find them around 800. I was really lucky. Um, I bought mine stamped from an AD on eBay. Um, I made a really sort of lowball offer, and they countered with a much better deal than I thought they would. So I ended up getting this for about $600. At that price, I think it's just an incredible deal. It's a way to get an iconic, beautifully designed, um, just really classic wristwatch um, in Swiss made as, as well, of course, um, at a price that compares to, you know, the sort of entry to mid-level JDM Seikos. Um, so I'm very pleased with it. I think up to a thousand I'd be very pleased with it. I've never spent more than that in a watch, so I don't know how I'd feel if I spent, you know, 1500 1600 on this piece. But for 600 it's pretty incredible. So keep your eyes peeled. Um, I haven't seen a lot of the black dial version at that price point. The white dial seems to pop up more often, probably because it's not as popular with the ADs. But you can find great deals on this and other glycines if you're patient. Um, let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your opinions on this watch, especially if you own it or have owned it, um, or are looking to buy the Glycine Airman. Um, and keep in mind, if this isn't your style, there's a huge range. There's 70s inspired sort of cushion case airmen, there's really modern blacked out and luminous airmen, um, different combinations of bezel and dial, GMT or no GMT. It's a really wide collection um, and you can find some pretty cool stuff. And if you're a vintage guy, try to find one of the original references of the airmen um, because they're super cool and still fairly affordable. Um, about the same as what this would retail for at, at suggested retail. Anyway, um, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Thanks for watching.